Hi Cancer, welcome to your July 2024 horoscope. I do have to say July has a lot happening, not in the sense that there are like major things, although there are fairly decent things happening, but more in the sense that there's just a huge quantity of aspects. When I was preparing, I was like, damn, these are really a lot of, uh, a lot of aspects to talk about. Because of time, I'm not going to bring up everything that's happening. There are some sextiles and trines with uh, Saturn and Neptune and Uranus that I am going to leave out just for the sake of time. However, don't worry, I am bringing up the most uh, prevalent ones, the most important ones, the ones that might feel the most intense uh, during the month of July. We start off the month with Neptune going retrograde. Neptune will be retrograde until December. And for you, Cancer, Neptune is going retrograde in your ninth house. It's been in your ninth house since 2011. So it's been making you reconsider any of the dreams that you had uh, around your lifestyle. You know, perhaps you were dreaming of living in Italy with some land and raising some sheep um, or other things, for example, maybe you've been uh, dreaming of a utopian land where capitalism does not exist anymore. Uh, so since 2011, you've sort of been considering these dreams, uh, working through them, seeing how you can incorporate them and which ones are perhaps a little bit unrealistic and you need to get rid of. And now that Neptune is retrograde, uh, you might be reflecting back on these themes and reconsidering the actions you've taken and if you want to change course. I do advise when it comes to changing course uh, to wait until Neptune goes direct at the end of December. Uh, it's usually best to use the retrograde to go within, to examine, and uh, leave the actions for when the planet goes direct. On July 6th, we have the new moon in Cancer, which is happening in your first house. So there might be some type of new beginning when it comes to your leadership, when it comes to uh, your personality and the way you show up in the world. Maybe there is a part of you that is determined uh, during this new moon to uh, go to more parties, that is determined to be the first one to speak up at work, that is determined to change your style up or start wearing more makeup or uh, perhaps revamp uh, the tone of voice with which you speak. A couple of days later, on July 10th, we have a really interesting transit with uh, the Sun and Venus and Saturn and Neptune. So the sun trines Saturn and Venus trines Neptune. And for you, Cancer, this is highlighting your first and ninth house. One of the ways that this could manifest for you is that the newfound confidence and new steps you've been taking in who you are and how you show up in the rest of the world is having a sort of positive influence onto your beliefs and your lifestyle uh, and your values. You know, if I had to give an example, uh, it could be this idea that uh, you decide, okay, I want to revamp my style. And as a result, in that process, you realize that actually uh, beauty aesthetics are really one of your core values that you want to make sure it applies to the rest of your life, not just to uh, the clothes that you wear. A day later, on the 11th of July, we have Venus entering your second house, the sign of Leo, and opposing Pluto. Pluto will actually be quite central in uh, the month of July. This is because both Venus and the Sun, as they enter Leo, will oppose the planet of Pluto. But also because we have a full moon later in the month that's happening really, really, really close uh, to where Pluto is at zero degrees of Aquarius. Venus and Pluto are opposing each other, which means tension. It means feeling like you're being pulled in two different directions. And for you, Cancer, because this is in your second and eighth house axis, you might really be feeling a pull between um, standing up for yourself, being your own independent person that can take care of yourself, 
you don't need nobody. You're capable and self-sufficient versus this other part of you that wants to merge with somebody else, that wants to feel the beauty and purpose of being dependent on others. And um, this beauty, when you depend on others and they don't let you down, they show up for you and um, how amazing and loving that can feel as well. On July 14th, we also have another big uh, transit or aspect happening uh, for the month of July. And this is a conjunction between Mars and Uranus. For you, Cancer, this is happening in your 11th house. So you might be quite a bit explosive or setting your boundaries with your community and with your network. Be careful that you don't overdo it. Of course, it's really important to set boundaries. Of course, it's really important to speak your, your unique opinion and uh, set yourself as different and independent. Uh, but do keep in mind that Mars and Uranus can be quite explosive. Um, so indeed, that's why I share the word of caution to, to be careful not to do something that you might regret later when that uh, powerful energy has subsided a bit. On July 20th, Mars enters Gemini, which is your 12th house. Mars entering Gemini can feel quite scattered for all of the zodiac signs, not just for you, Cancer. But especially for you, because it's entering your 12th house, you might feel a little bit scattered internally. You might feel a little bit scattered when it comes to your spirituality. You might be trying out lots of different spirituality systems for your own life. And you might feel a little bit scattered as well when it comes to the methods that you use to escape this world. You know, perhaps all of a sudden you are watching TV and eating amazing food and sleeping a lot. Um, so you have lots of different things that are uh, allowing you to sort of escape and put all of this behind. Be careful. Uh, this is honestly a word of caution that I'm giving to everybody, not just to you, Cancer. Uh, but just be careful not to overextend yourself and stretch yourself too thin uh, because Mars and Gemini can be really quite scattered. We finally reached uh, the full moon that I uh, talked about earlier in the horoscope. So on July 21st, we have a full moon in Capricorn. So the moon is at 29 degrees of Capricorn and Pluto is at zero degrees of Aquarius. So even though they're in different signs, they are definitely close to each other. And we also have Mars trining Pluto during the full moon. So this Plutonian influence is definitely front and center. A full moon represents uh, a new piece of information. It represents a revelation, something being brought to light. And what I think is being brought to light with this full moon might be something to have to do with the Pluto in Capricorn transit that we've all been experiencing in the last 20 years. And the reason I think this is because, I mean, first of all, the full moon is happening at 29 degrees of Capricorn, but also because Pluto is making its way towards that 29th degree of Capricorn. And actually later in the year, Pluto will indeed go back into Capricorn and be at that 29th degree. I do not think the piece of information or the awareness that's coming to us is going to be necessarily negative or challenging. This is because we also have the influences of Venus, Neptune, and Jupiter during this full moon. Rather, I think that this piece of information might feel as sort of the missing puzzle piece that just allows us to see the bigger picture that allows us to make sense of that whole transit. It allows us to finally see why everything had to occur the way it had to occur, how it led us to be exactly who we need to be right here and right now. And for you, Cancer, Pluto was for 20 years in your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one relationships. So it might especially be uh, a piece of awareness about what it means to be in a partnership that's coming about for you during this full moon. I do have to point out that the sun opposes Pluto exactly the day after on July 22nd. Because of this, I do think that the effects of the full moon will be a little bit more drawn out. Uh, the crescendo might feel drawn out. Maybe it's a crescendo that starts on the 21st, doesn't finish until the 22nd. Uh, so that's definitely something to consider. The intensity might keep building. 
I also want you to keep in mind what happened earlier in the month when Venus opposed Pluto. It's possible that you have the same things coming up now that the Sun is opposing Pluto as well. And the last transit that I wanted to chat about in this horoscope is a sextile between the Sun and Mars. This is happening on July 25th. For you, Cancer, the Sun is in your second house and Mars is in your 12th. Mars has been in your 12th house for about five days at this point, but hopefully you've been putting in some attention and some love into your spirituality, into your inner world, perhaps dealing with some limiting beliefs, addressing them. And as a result, that's having a really good effect on your confidence. It's having, it's allowing you to show up for yourself and respect yourself uh, in a much better way that, than you may have been able to do so before. So overall, Cancer, I am excited for July for you. You have some focus on your future goals, also some focus allowing you to withdraw and focus on your own inner world. And at the same time, you're thinking about big things like your beliefs and where you're going, where you're heading. Uh, so definitely a lot of different ha things happening for you in the month of July. I wanted to thank you for joining me for this horoscope. And before you go, I also wanted to remind you of something. I wanted to remind you that I am doing a giveaway. When we reach a thousand subscribers on this channel, I will be giving away one free reading. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you do that. Thanks so much for joining me, Cancer, and I hope to see you again soon.